I'm looking for Josh. This is him. How are you doing? This is Ronnie Bumblefoot. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, good. You, uh, you cool to chat? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, uh, to talk about the brand new Art of Anarchy album. Great, great. All right. Um, do you want me to just ramble or do you got some questions? <laughs> well, actually, before we start with the interview, I just wanted to talk about how awesome of a person you are. Because back oh. in 2014, when you were part of the Guitar Gods tour with Ingve, uh, you played in Minnesota and I happened to be at the show. And right after your set, um, my girlfriend and I were sitting near the back enjoying the seats in between the sets. And you came up to us and shook our hands and thanked us for coming to the show, not knowing who we were or anything, just as fans. Hello. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for that because, like... We, well, thank we, you. <laughs> thank you for being there and thank you for, uh, for your time right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, just, it's great to see that you do have that appreciation for your fans, no matter what band you're a part of. I mean, you truly care about the people who are out there to see you. Well, I mean, that's, that's why we do it. <laughs> you know, it, it's, that's really the ultimate part of being a musician is, you know, you, you don't just do it for yourself. <laughs> if you did that, you, you just stay in your room and do it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, well, again, awesome. It, it's great to have you uh, do this interview with me to talk about the brand new Art of Anarchy album, The Madness, which is coming out March 24th through Century Media. I guess um, there, there's so many things that could be talked about when it comes to the band and the album. I guess I'll just leave it up to you on uh, where you want it to start. Oh, we could start anywhere. We could start with uh, the songs, how the band came together, recording it, and anything. The crazy past history that led to this moment. Uh, anything you want. Ah, uh, cool. Well, I, I would well, say... All of the above. <laughs> all of it. All oh, that. awesome. Well, I, I would just like to say, first of all, the debut album from Art of Anarchy, uh, the self-titled, is just an amazing album to me. I, I love the combination that was a part of that album, and I'm glad to see that the band is still going strong with the new album because you know it's just like when a situation like what happened it, it can ruin a band and i'm glad to see that that was not the case yeah yeah it was a very rough takeoff but somehow we managed to stay in the air um yeah yeah it you know it's the band really it didn't start off the way most bands start where it's a bunch of guys jamming saying hey let's form a band uh, this goes back 20 years, really. It starts 20 years ago when the Voda brothers, John and Vince, the guitarist and drummer, uh, twin brothers from the boroughs of New York City, and they had bands, and I had a studio, and I would produce their albums and their demos and everything they were doing locally, and we just always stayed friends. And then it was in 2008 when I had a, uh, it was a, a fundraising show in Vegas, and they came out and I put together a little all-star band and they came out to support it and they had them come up and play and it put the spark back in them. And I didn't even know it, but they were writing songs again. And, and I say, I know back in 2011, they said, look, we want to make the album we always wanted to make. We want to do our dream album. And we have 10 songs written, just the music for, and we'd love to lay them down in the studio and just do everything we always wanted to do without any compromise. And they came into the studio and tracked their stuff. I started laying guitar parts, you know, additional little things over it. And we started looking for singers, started reaching out to different singers, thinking that it would be, you know, maybe one singer on one song, another singer on another. And Scott Weiland was the first one to, uh, to oblige. And he did the song Till the Dust is Gone and it came out just fantastic. And then talks turned into, hey, let's do the whole album and let's you know, do more than this one song and started making plans for the future and and where it would go from there. And so, you know, now he <laughs> was the vocalist of this album and, and then John Moyer from Disturbed, he joined as, as the bass player and laid all his bass and that was it. And at first we were going to put it out ourselves and just put together our own machine to operate it all, but we got a record deal with Century Media. And from there, uh, we actually, we delayed the album release for almost a year. Uh, 
for Scott Weil, and so he had time to do everything he wanted with Blaster, and nothing would uh, interfere as far as promotion or anything like that. Um, but 2015, the year the album came out, ended up being a very challenging year, and yeah. But from there, uh, the album came out in June, and it was very evident that <laughs> Scott Weiland wanted to stick with his solo thing full time and and just do the wild about full time and and not have anything to do with Art of Anarchy. So we started looking for a new singer. And in August, two months later, we met up with Scott's staff. We flew down to uh, to see him, and we hopped in a rehearsal studio and jammed for a bit, and then grabbed some dinner and just talked about things. And a month later, he came up for about two weeks to New York, and we spent the whole band, all five of us, in a big room every day, just busting out a song or two a day. Uh, just making rough demos as we just played live. And then I had tours, he had tours, everybody was off touring. And then I started working with the Voter Brothers to lay down the, uh, the music. And we got back together in February and March and spent a good two months, uh, with Scott every day, just working on the vocals and just reshaping these songs and revamping them and just turning them into what they are, taking all those ideas, and as you're writing on these ideas, it takes them in a different direction, and next thing you know, the chorus is now the verse, and you're working on a new chorus, and, and this bridge part becomes the main riff that starts the song, and like all those kinds of things. So just restructuring, letting the songs develop. Uh, we wrote half the album during that time, and then lots more touring, and just waiting for all the planets to align again, where we can all get together and continue. And just throughout the year, we got it all done until this January, we laid uh, the vocals and finished mixing and got it in the label's hands right on the due date, January 14th. Next day, I flew down to Florida and went and did Ship Rock. <laughs> so, right on schedule. Oh, that that's amazing. I mean, it, it's great to see how you guys were able to turn a very turbulent year and spend all of that time making the band even stronger now. I mean, I can honestly say that with listening to the new album. I mean, it feels like the band's absolutely on fire, and it's great to hear Scott singing again. Oh, he's fantastic. He's singing better than ever, and he's really stretched his boundaries vocally and is doing things he's never done before vocally, just different approaches and, and a lot of different tones and just showing more of what he's capable of. Yeah, and it was evident from the first single, The Madness, where you can just really hear that. I mean, you hear the fire and power in his voice again, especially in that first chorus when you first notice it. I mean, it's right there. Yeah. Good stuff, and yeah, wait till you hear the. There's a. Have you heard the rest of the album yet? Oh yeah, I've been. Uh, I've oh, had so the album for about whole... a week and a half now, and I've been listening to it almost every day, and really packing Great. it in. So yeah, you could hear even in like the first song. Oh yeah, you know, Echo, where you know at the end, you know, he's like, oh, oh, scribe, that's Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he's never done that in his life. <laughs> so that's the thing. It's like we're each pushing more out of each other, and just like you know, it is sort of bringing out another side of each other. Uh, it's good. It's good. And I love the fact that each one of us has a strong personality that you hear in the music. I mean, Scott is, you know, he, you can't not tell it's Scott. Scott is very obvious what he brings. Uh, the sound of his voice, his approach to just those melodies that stick with you. Um, Moyer, you know, with his bass, you know, there's definitely, the bass is not hidden on the album. He's right there, as he should be. And he's driving all the, the grooves. And then you have the Boda Brothers that have this old school metal attack and fire to them. And, and, you know, John's Boda solos are just very, they have that, that just relentless digging in. Uh, they sound like almost thrash metal solos a lot of times, the way he solos. Uh, he's either super melodic or just a thrashing. Um, yeah, yeah, you, and you put all these ingredients together, and then there's me, who's all artsy-ish and left field, and, and just kind of put a twist on it all that's without all of them might you know, not be so digestible. Yet, I think what, what I bring to it might be... You know, I, I add the, the something different factor to it all, whether it's the, 
guitar solos or writing or certain harmonies or things like that or even little things in the production. So you put it all together and it has a definite character to it. It has, uh, it's not reinventing the wheel, but it has something unique and individual about it. And then leads me very curious on a question that I had uh, regarding that. Was Scott familiar with Art of Anarchy before you asked to jam with him? And if he was, what did he feel that he could... Well, there, there was a lot of things. He was looking for a band to be part of. We were looking for a singer. Um, we're both looking to be with people that want to be on a healthy road. And, you know, we're a drug-free band. Uh, we don't, you know, me and the Voter Brothers, we, we don't drink. We've never even smoked pot. Uh, Scott needs to be around that kind of thing as well. It'll just be that much easier for him to stay focused without being distracted <laughs> by the wrong element. Uh, we keep that out. Uh, so that is also a good match. That was a good part of it all. Um, did he know the music? Did he know the first album? Uh, I'm guessing that he did some homework, you know, before we met up. I mean, we knew his stuff and, you know, he knew some of our other things, but did he know Art of Anarchy's first album, which had just only come out two months before? Um, I'm guessing that he gave a listen, checked out the backstory. Uh, never really talked about it. <laughs> never asked him. Uh, we just, you know, got together and, you know, we were familiar as individuals with our backgrounds and all. Uh, but yeah, I can't really say for him. I don't know. I never asked his thoughts on the first album. Did he hear it beforehand or his thoughts on the band or anything like that? I don't know. You gotta ask him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in, in a way, that's a really cool thing because it makes it feel like it's a brand new band when you're just focusing on brand new material like that. Well, it definitely is. Uh, yeah, with, with Scott Stapp and the band, it is a brand new band. Uh, you know, it went through an odd evolution <laughs> to get to where it is. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely, you know, the first album was very unique in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, some people will accuse it of, of not being, you know, a genuine band kind of thing. But it's not that it's not genuine, it's that it didn't start that way. It evolved into it. And every band has to start somehow. You know, this one started with two guys that wanted to make their dream album, and then it turned into a band, and and then it just took getting the right lineup that all were on the same page with the same ideas for the future that wanted to see it through all the way. So here we are. <laughs> And w with that said, when you were first jamming with Scott for the first time, what was the song or the moment where you realized that he was meant to be in the band? Ah, uh, well, we were in a room down in Florida, just jamming and just sort of writing a song and feeling things out. And at that point, things are still, you know, it's, it's a first date. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, yeah, this is cool, but you don't know if it's going to lead to marriage and... Um, it's just the first day, so feeling it out, getting to know each other, and, and just seeing if it feels like there could be a second date out of it. And we did that, and it was during the that time up in New York when we're all jamming together and and trying different ideas and talking about direction and well, no, just just coming up with ideas and one will have an opinion on, on the riff and someone else will have a different opinion on it and then we take it in this direction just, but it was pretty organic just jamming ideas it's like hey give me a beat like this boom 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 and playing something to it and then someone else will join in and change it around normal band stuff a band in a room kind of stuff but I remember it was I think I'm trying to remember which song it was but Scott suddenly just like stopped what he was doing. He's like, this is the moment. This is it. I'm like, what's that? It's like, there's a moment when you just know. It's like, okay, this is our first song and this is a band and this is who we are. And it just happened. And I don't, <laughs> I wish I could remember which song it was. It was either Won't Let You Down or No Surrender or The Madness. It was one of them where it happened. And it's like, okay, this is going to lead to more you know, this is this is going to work, this is going to be something real, and we're going to 
figure this out and we can move it forward and keep it going. Oh, that that is amazing. And it, it's great to see that uh, Inel Sans mentioned the madness. Like, that was the first taste of the brand new album because it just, it really feels like everything is on fire when it comes to that. I mean, it, it really feels like a rejuvenized band and Scott's singing better than ever, like you were talking about. I mean, you can definitely hear that throughout the entire album. And with music that I never thought that he would be playing with either. Like, I never thought I would hear Scott Staff singing over double bass or thrash parts, but you hear it on this album. Yeah. Yeah, Scott's going heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, heavier. Um, and it's good. I think fans like that. They like when the intensity knob is turned up. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, and that was, yeah, that, you know, when we chose that single, we only had really like four songs to choose from. We were just starting out and we shot the video last April to it. And it was just waiting to time it for when we knew that we could all do the, uh, the you know, touring and the release and everything. So, yeah. Uh, so with that, I mean, you guys have uh, done a couple shows together now as a band how has the crowd reception been for the new material you know we only did one show oh, we've only one. had okay. one show in in october so i mean we're really you know we're just kind of starting out um it was a great reception you know, the crowd was was definitely supportive and enthusiastic and loud and and afterwards you know a lot of reaction uh you know like a lot of a lot of people sending me messages, you know, hey, I love this song that you did, I love that one that you did, and yeah, it was good. No, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. And I think once uh, people get a taste of the next single and when the album finally comes out on March 24th, I mean, they're they're really going to be able to hear the evolution of the band, the evolution of Scott's vocals, and just everyone together just in this amazing album. <sighs> I'm looking forward to it, finally. <laughs> finally getting this album out. It's been a year and a half of us just growing and developing and, and becoming what we are, who we are, and that's going to continue once we hit the road. It's going to sound even more like this singular identity of the band because that's when it really comes together when you're just out there in the trenches every day, nonstop. Yeah, that's when you really get to know a band and when a band really gets stronger is when you're on the road together and spending all that time together for a month or more on end and really seeing how the crowd reacts at every show, how how you react in between dates, like if there's an off date where you're just traveling. I mean, that's when a band really starts to get it together. Yeah. But also musically, like every, you know, like these songs, once we've played them live a hundred times, they're probably going to have a different character to them than the album has. You know, they're going to develop, it'll develop its own thing. That happens, that definitely happens too. So I'm, I'm curious to see just where it all goes, it'll be good. Yeah. So, with that said, um, do you mean like, um, like a song might go a little faster or slower, or a solo might be different, or there might be some improv moments in that, or is it just the live experience that you're talking about? Ah, uh, all of that. <laughs> Everything <laughs> awesome. you just mentioned. You know, tempos might change, riffs might change, harmonies might change. Like we might start just like throwing a sudden stop somewhere that wasn't there, or accent that we all do those little subtleties, and just you know our overall uh, the way we play, the way we sing. Just that's going to change too. So it's going to become even more of its own beast. I think once we're really out there touring. And in speaking of that, is there anything currently being lined up? Um, I know there's nothing official yet but um is there talks of like getting things going this year yes yes a lot of talks and we're looking at a lot of uh tour offers and and possibilities and just want to make the right choices uh we do have april 29th in las vegas and we're headlining rock into spring festival so that one is confirmed and there's more coming around it, so definitely we'll be out there. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and if you guys make it back to Minnesota, I definitely want to be there and be able to experience the new album live. Great, thank you. Oh, not a problem. So I, I would imagine when the live uh, shows start to come, I mean, when you really start to focus on it, are you just going to be focusing on the new album, or is there anything that's going to be played off the first one? Well, I know the voters would love to do things off the first album. Uh, I'd like to also. Uh, but I'm sure that at this point, it's more about supporting and, and pushing and just focusing on the album with Scott Stapp, the, the Madness album. So I'm 
guessing that we may have to wait a while until uh, until this album was really uh, fermented for a while, <laughs> for lack of a, a good word. Um, and then uh, there's got to be a better word than fermented. Um, has, has sunk in. Has, has you know, once the album has has settled in for a while then we can start doing more. For me, you know, I would love to be doing uh, different covers, uh, all kinds of stuff. But I'm sure at first it's going to be heavily focused on just playing from this new album. Yeah, and that definitely makes sense. I mean, it's a it's a new front man, new album, new life to the band. I mean, and it, of course it's coming out March 24th, so you really want to be able to represent that the best way you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, funny you mentioned that about um, covers live. Like, is there anything like off the top of your head that you would want to try at some point once the songs uh, start getting that really live feel to it? I mean, with everyone in the band? Oh, it's not unusual from Tom Jones or uh, something, maybe something with the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I'm open to anything. Uh, that's the problem. I need to be reeled in because I will literally do anything. Uh, but uh, I think that, uh, you know, Honestly, I would do anything from just a classic rock song to uh, even a Creed song or, you know, one of my own songs or something from the first album or I'm open. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And, yeah, and just convincing everyone else to go along with any wacky ideas that I might have, which is <laughs> slim to none. <laughs> Now, in, in speaking of that, um, with all the amazing bands that you've been a part of over the years, whether it's in production or your amazing instrumental skills, is there anything else being lined up uh, this year or next as far as stuff outside of Art of Anarchy, or is that your main focus right now? Uh, right now, it's definitely the main focus, but there are some, you know, I'm going to keep doing solo clinics and, and gigs and little mini tours because I do have 20 years of albums and and all of that. So I'd like to keep that going. Plus, I just love doing clinics and teaching and all of that. Uh, there was some other stuff. Well, I'm also doing uh, you know, guest solos for people and things like that and different uh, guest gigs or one-off gigs or like uh, all-star groups. Uh, there's one called Platinum Rock All Stars I have with Jeff Downs from Yes in Asia and uh, Carmine a piece on drums, Rudy Sozo on bass, Phil Narrow on vocals, and then I'm sharing the guitar duties with Gene Cornish from The Rascals. It's like a really unique lineup, and we did a couple of shows uh, last fall and just had a blast. It was so much fun just doing music from everybody's background and. It really was a fun time playing in Chicago and in Toronto. So hopefully we'll do some more of that as well. Uh, but yeah, plenty of things. There's Metal Allegiance, which is a great, fun band to play with, just busting out tons of of heavy songs that we all grew up with, plus their own originals that they have as well. Uh, so that's a really good one. Uh, did that one with Mike Portnoy on drums and Mark Menge on bass. Uh, Alex Skolnick on guitar, um, Marco Segata from Death Angel on vocals, and Chuck Billy on vocals. Uh, yeah, that's a very, <laughs> definitely a fun one. Yeah, and again, it's incredible to see all the amazing musicians that you've worked with, whether they're one-off appearances, you're in the full-fledged band, all-star groups like that. Um, uh, before we wrap things up here and get to the plugging and everything, I was curious when you were listing all those off, was there any musician that you ever got to jam with that you were just flabbergasted or starstruck by being able to jam with? I think the one that sticks in my mind the most was being on stage with... Uh, it was Mike Portnoy on drums, and it was Scott Ian and Frankie Bello from Anthrax on bass and guitar, and I was on guitar, and it was with also Ace Freely and Peter Chris together from the original lineup of Kiss. And we did songs that they hadn't played together in over 30 years. Peter Chris was telling me, like the song Hooligan, and we did Love Her All I Can. Uh, that was pretty interesting to be looking around and surrounded by 
anthrax and kiss and you know bands that influenced you so much and inspired you and really were some of the only reason that you're on that stage is because of them and because of the inspiration that they gave you and to be making that music with them on stage at that moment was pretty surreal it was just like a whole wow this is pretty fucking cool <laughs> kind of feeling <laughs> Yeah, and that is the perfect uh, note to end on. I sadly got to wrap it up. I, I probably have another right. day and a half worth of questions for you, but I think we covered a lot of ground when it comes to the brand new Anna of Ar- Anna of Art of Anarchy album, The Madness, yeah. which is coming out March 24th through Century Media, and a lot of great insight into everything that goes into being in a band and starting over again with your band and all of the amazing stuff that you've done. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to mention I haven't brought up yet? Ah, I think we're cool. Uh, let's see. What else? Right? Art of Anarchy. Um, the album comes out March 24th. Uh, there's nothing else to tell at this point. No, we've covered it all. We are good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just thank you very much. Thank you for your time and, and for spreading the word. And, and you know, I, yeah, 